So let's talk about immutability so that we can understand what immutable and mutable actually is before we get going with building out our own custom store. Now you may have seen the word immutable and mutable flying around on things such as Stack Overflow answers or in tooling documentation, but we're gonna do a quick refresher on what immutability actually is. So here I've added this quote, an immutable object is an object whose state cannot be modified after creation. So let's assume that we just create a basic object. We could say const to do equals a new object with a label and a completed property. Now, after we've actually created this object, the theory behind treating it as immutable means that we can't actually change it after it's been created. So in our case with the to do, we couldn't simply add a new property to it after it has been created. So if we want to actually add a new property to our to-do object, or for instance, change a property that already exists, the idea behind treating things as immutable is that we actually just take a copy of the object, make the changes on a new object, and return that particular object as a new object. So the flow here is, let's just assume we created const to-do equals an object with a label of eat pizza. And we want to change this label Instead of doing to do dot label equals, what we would actually do is make a copy of it and change the label in the copy and reassign it. So we'll actually walk through this in a bit more detail. But first we need to understand why immutable. Why should we actually be treating our data as immutable? So we've got a few things here. We've got predictability. Now the number one thing with predictability is we don't have these object references to everything. Now we'll actually describe these as we come along in the next few slides and show you some interesting differences between some of the JavaScript that's actually immutable by design and things that are not immutable, which we call mutable, which are also in the JavaScript language. Now things like objects and arrays, they are completely mutable. So we just need to learn how to treat them as immutable. So that comes with predictability. So when we want to update something, we just make a copy. This makes debugging much easier because let's assume that we mutate a property on an object and it has different references in other variables. Now, because objects are bound by reference, this could cause a bug that's very hard to actually find out what the bug is further down, perhaps a function tree. Whereas if we use immutable, we are never touching any existing data. We're always in full control of what is happening. And that's what state management libraries such as Redux and NGRX store actually help us with. So they help us be predictable and make our code predictable. Now it's important to understand this because the explicit state changes that we make are in fact done in the reducer. So we've actually given you an example in the previous video where we looked at using an immutable object. We use dot 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 state dot to do's, which is a spread operator which merges in an existing array into a new array. The other benefit of immutable in Angular itself comes down to Angular's change detection. So in fact, we can actually disable Angular's change detection entirely, and we can get a big performance boost from actually doing so. We won't talk too much depth on this because we'll explore it when we actually get onto building this application and we'll understand the performance enhancements that we can make. The other great thing about using a state management library along with immutable data structures is mutation tracking. Now we call it mutation tracking because we can essentially track how our mutations are made. Now this doesn't mean that we are actually mutating the store directly. It allows us to track those store mutations and we mutate them in an immutable way. This allows things like undo state changes because every action that we dispatch and every function call in a reducer and every rebind of the new state, we can actually track these, we can undo states, we can move forward, and we can also use the Redux dev tools to see all of these things happening in real time as we navigate through our application. Now we'll come onto the dev tools further on in the course. So let's continue with understanding immutability. Now we're actually going to take an interesting step here and look at mutability first. So what things can we mutate in JavaScript? So here are three examples. We have functions, we have objects and arrays. Now after a function has been created, you can actually attach properties to it whenever you like. Similarly with an object, you can create a new object, you can add a new property, you can change a new property. 
and also similarly with an array. You can create an array and you can remove items, you can add items and so forth. So these by design are completely mutable. So this is what we want to sort of take a deeper look at to understand how we can make these things immutable or think in an immutable way. So let's start by looking at how objects are in fact mutable. We have const character and we just have a name property on that particular object. Now underneath I'm actually doing character.role equals captain, which then when we console log this gives us the name and the role. So this is basic stuff and we likely do things like this all the time. However, when it comes to data structures, we might not actually want to do this. When we do character.role equals captain and then console log it, you can see that the actual const character, the whole object has been updated. Now if you're referencing this object in multiple places, it could lead to unintended side effects that are difficult to debug. So we want to focus on immutable. Let's take a look at a second example. Here we have const names with two values which are just pure strings. We can say names.push and we can push a new value into that names. When we log it out, we have three values in that array. So this is basic stuff again, and we can see that the names actually has been updated by just using the push method on the array prototype. Now this may be bad, just like before with the object idea, because arrays are in fact objects, and they are also passed by reference, just like a JavaScript object also is. So now that we've got an understanding that some pieces of JavaScript are not immutable, we need to actually start thinking in an immutable way. Now interestingly enough, JavaScript actually has strings and numbers built in, which are completely immutable by design. So what do I mean by this? And let's have a look at a code example. So let's just say that we do const name equals and then the string. We can then say const uppercase name equals name and then we can call that to uppercase method. Now if we log both of these individually, you can see that the first one has not been changed at all and Han Solo in the second example is completely uppercase. So this is actually really interesting because this is the way that JavaScript works and JavaScript strings are not mutable by design, they are immutable. So when we call a method such as to uppercase, this is actually returning a brand new string with the result of the uppercase function call. So you can see that const name is the first in the console log and that has not been mutated at all. So this is exactly how we want to think in terms of immutable data structures when we're building with a store and in general, even if you're not using a store, thinking in immutable is a far more predictable way of developing with our data structures. So what we actually want to learn using the two previous examples of an object that's mutable and an array which is also mutable, how can we mutate these things without actually causing any unintended side effects? So let's take our character again. We have a name property. Now we can say const updated character and we can create a brand new object here. Now the interesting piece is that we have dot 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 followed by character. So what this essentially does is the same as the object assign above and it will essentially spread the character object, all of the properties, into this new object. And all that's basically doing is taking a copy of the object and creating a brand new one. The second thing that we're doing on this updated character is we're adding a new property to the object saying the role is then a captain. So when we come to the console logs, we've got two here. So the first one is console log character, and we just have that initial character which has not been mutated at all. The second one, the console log updated character, we have the name and we also have the role. So they're two different objects, they're not the same, they're not pointing to each other, and one is just taking a copy of the other, making the changes that we need, which in our case we're adding a role, and merging those changes together. Much like the uppercase method of a string, it returns us a new string which is uppercase without affecting the previous string that we actually called the method on. Now I've added a comment in here saying object assign with an empty object, with a character, and then a new object with a role of captain. So this piece is essentially equivalent to the const updated character where we use the spread operator which is the dot dot dot. So this is a new TypeScript and ES6 feature which is essentially a shorthand for the object assign above, which you may have more commonly seen. So let's move on to our array example. We have a constant with names with two strings in again. 
we can say const that the new names are a new array and we're going to use dot 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 names and spread that array into an existing array. So at that point in time, we actually have an, a new array with both values in. However, you can see that we're adding R2D2 as another value. And when we come to console log this, you can see console log names has Han Solo and Darth Vader, whereas the new names has Han Solo, Darth Vader, and R2D2, which is our new value. So this is giving you an example, much like how we can think about immutable objects. This is how we can think about immutable arrays. Now there are many more immutable operations and we'll actually be covering them throughout the course. So if you haven't used these before, you can follow along nicely and I'll be explaining them as we go. When we want to remove things from an array, instead of using things like dot splice, we can actually create a new array and remove that item using the filter operator. So you may have seen this before as well. So now we're ready and we understand the main building blocks. We've looked at the three principles of Redux, some of the core concepts. We've looked at actions, reducers. We've looked at the state object and the store. And now we've looked at the final piece, which is the immutability and how we can hang everything together. So what we're going to do in the next chapter is build our own custom store while taking everything that we've just learned into consideration. So I'll see you in the next chapter where we're going to build our own custom store.